Hi, I am Joe Sam and I am from Technology Research Lab. Let's see what a blockchain is. A blockchain is a continuously growing list of records called blocks which are linked and secured using cryptography. Each block typically contains a cryptographic hash of the previous block, a timestamp and the transaction data. A blockchain is inherently resistant to any data modification as it is an open distributed ledger that can record transaction between two parties efficiently and in a verifiable permanent way. Let's go through the basics of a block in a blockchain. A blockchain has a list of blocks. It start with a single block called the genesis block. As we can see the first block is called the genesis block and each block contains the information like index, timestamp, hash, previous hash, data and nouns. Let's look into all this in detail. Index The index is the position of the block in the blockchain. The genesis block has an index of 0 and the next block will have an index of 1. Timestamp A record of when the block was created. The timestamp helps keep the blockchain in order. Hash A hash looks like a bunch of random numbers. It is a numeric value that uniquely identifies data or the digital fingerprint of data. A valid hash is a hash that meets a certain requirement. For this blockchain, three leading zeros in front of the hash is the requirement for a valid hash. The number of leading zeros required is the difficulty. You have also keep in mind, hash has a fixed length. Same data result in same hash. Small changes in data leads to total changes in hash. Hash is easy to compute, infeasible to convert hash to data. Previous hash The previous hash is the hash of the previous block. The genesis block's previous hash is zero because there is no previous block. Data mutation Let's edit the genesis block data. Since data is an input variable for the hash, changing the data will result in change of hash. The new hash will lose its three leading zeros and becomes invalid. Such a mutation will also make subsequent blocks invalid. A hash change will cause a mutation in the previous hash of subsequent blocks. Since Previous hash is used to calculate the present hash. Subsequent hashes will change. This will lead to a cascading invalidation of blocks. Miners and mining a block. In a blockchain, miners validate new transactions and record them on the global ledger. Miners compete to solve a difficult mathematical problem based on a cryptographic hash algorithm. The solution found is called the proof of work. This proof proves that a miner did spend a lot of time and resource to solve the problem. Coming back to our example, whenever we change anything in the block, the hashing algorithm is rerun until it figures out which nouns to be set to get the three leading zeros in front of the hash. This process is called mining and through mining we find a valid hash. The picture shows how we can validate an invalid hash by clicking the mine button. Nouns The nouns is the number used to find a valid hash. The nouns iterates from zero until a valid hash is found. This uses processing power and as difficulty increases, the number of possible valid hashes decreases. 
with less possible valid hashes it takes more processing power to find a valid hash block hash calculation the hashing function takes data as input and returns a unique hash since the hash is a digital fingerprint of the entire block the data is the combination of index timestamp previous hash block data and nouns now how can we determine it's a valid block or not when adding a new block to the blockchain the new block needs certain requirements to be met like being block index 1 greater than the latest block index being block previous hash exactly similar to the latest block hash block hash able to meet the difficulty requirements and the block hash is been correctly calculated mind you other peers on the network will adding blocks to the blockchain so new blocks needs to be validated distributed blockchain let's try to understand distributed blockchain through a live demo in a distributed blockchain two or more peer will be having an exact copy of blockchain let's make some peer and blocks first and then connect to each other so that they can enjoy a distributed ledger of blockchain as you can see we have got one peer satoshi and it has got only the genesis block nothing else let's add one more peer the peer oscar has been added oscar also do have only one block which is the genesis block nothing else plus a, let's connect this one to the satoshi network so that they can enjoy the distributed blockchain now let's add one more peer as you can see there is only one block the genesis block nothing else let's connect this to the existing network let me add one more peer same again only one block which is the genesis block nothing else let's connect it to the existing network and lastly we will add one more we will connect this to the existing network now let's create some blocks let's get to the satoshi and now add a new block provide the data let me provide block 1 request has been made once the block is been validated it is been added to the existing block which is the genesis block and we have a blockchain now with two blocks genesis block and the block 1 since all the peer are in same network everyone will have the same copy of this blockchain which which is the genesis block and the block 1 let me add another block here block 2 request has been made let's wait for it get validated yeah it's been validated now the second block has been created and has been added to the existing blockchain so we have three blocks now genesis block block 1 and block 2 everyone will have the same copy of blockchain now let's add one more block here 
let me give a data block 3 request it to validate it's been validated and the block 3 has been added to the existing blockchain let's go to another peer and add a different block let me give data block 4 request to validate since it is validated it has been added to the existing block now let's see what happens if we change any of the block data let me get to the peer Mimi and change the block 1 data as you can see every block including the block 1 has become invalid because now the hash is not having the preceding three zeros and hence it has made the rest of the blocks invalid and even if I try to remine I have left with no other option except to remine every subsequent blocks like I have to block remine this one I have to remine block 2 I have to remine block 3 and I have to remine block 4 and such a process can be very hectic and very time consuming and imagine if you have a 50 to 60 thousand blocks that's the main reason a blockchain can resist data mutation and manipulation now let me get to the peer Mimi and make the block one to its previous self I will now change the last block data which is the block 4 data let me change the data here and make this block invalid now to make it valid I have to remine it so that the hash will start with three preceding zeros now the peer Mimi's last block is manipulated and remimed to make it valid but how will the remaining peers come to know about data mutation done by the peer Mimi it's simple just compare the last block hash to find out which peer is doing the dodgy stuff let's compare every single one let me get to the satoshi first and here the last block 4 hash is triple zero b9 so let's go to the oscar now and let me compare this one yeah it is the same one triple zero b9 now let's go to the another peer let's take philippi and let's compare this one it is the same one triple zero b9 now the last pair let me compare this one also yeah it starts with triple zero b9 now let's get to the mimi peer mimi and compare the last block hash now as you can see it is it doesn't start with triple zero b9 it start with triple zero zero seven that means peer Mimi has been remimed so that's how you come to know 
that one pair or one node is doing the dodgy stuff as it is one against four that's all for now i hope you understand the basics of blockchain now